start uh, with the webinar again. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Thomas Strass. I'm from the Austin Institute of Technology, and I'm co-organizing this webinar uh, out of the Horizon 2020 project Eurigrid, uh, which is co-supported by SMC and IES ITP societies. Uh, our presentation uh, is given today about ICT standards for smart grids by Daniele Palla. He's a researcher at the uh, REC in uh, Italy and uh, also part of the Eurigrid project. So now I will hand over to um, Daniele, he will give us an overview about the work and uh, about how to use IEC 61850 SIM and uh, their implementations in uh, our Eurigrid uh, uh, research infrastructure uh, program. At the end of the webinar, um, you are, we have some uh, time to uh, answer your uh, questions. So Daniele, uh, now you can uh, okay. start with your presentation. Okay, thanks uh, Thomas. Um, and uh, good morning to, to everybody. Thanks for connecting to this uh, uh, to this uh, webinar. As uh, Thomas already said, uh, it will be about uh, some uh, important ICT standards for smart, uh, smart grades, in particular IC 61850 and uh, uh, SIM, and how we have used this uh, standard, or we, how we are using uh, actually these standards in uh, the, the very great uh, project. Um, Thomas already shortly introduced me, so I am uh, uh, a researcher at uh, uh, RSC, which is uh, located in Italy, uh, and uh, uh, personally I am also uh, involved uh, in uh, uh, ISC uh, standardization, in particular uh, Technical Committee 57, which uh, deals uh, uh, with uh, 61850 and uh, Sigma. And personally I am a member of the Working Group 10 and Working Group 17, which deal with uh, uh, 61850, both, uh, both of them. Um, so, uh, a short uh, uh, agenda of uh, the presentation. Uh, I will give a um, short uh, introductory uh, part on uh, ICT uh, interoperability in general, uh, in great. Um, uh, and then uh, I will uh, use this introductory part in order to uh, introduce the main uh, standards, uh, IC standards for uh, smart grids, which are uh, IC 6150 and uh, uh, the SIM, IC Common Information Model. Uh, and uh, uh, the presentation uh, uh, will uh, have some uh, uh, specific uh, part uh, related to the Heritage project uh, and uh, in particular to illustrate, uh, apart from uh, let's say the theoretical uh, uh, information about uh, these uh, standards, uh, how we actually applied them in this, uh, in this project, uh, what uh, difficulties we found uh, and uh, uh, what the software we have uh, uh, used and possibly uh, released uh, as, uh, also as open source for uh, the, this, uh, uh, this uh, standard. So, uh, to introduce uh, the, the main uh, topic of this presentation at a very high level in general is uh, uh, about uh, uh, ICT interoperability. Uh, so in, uh, in very few words, what is the interoperability? It's simply uh, the ability uh, of uh, uh, two or more uh, system to exchange information and uh, 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 actually uh, be able to use uh, uh, in a meaningful way this uh, information in order to uh, implement uh, uh, the function of what, uh, let's say, the use case that, that they have to, um, uh, to implement, or that they are supposed to implement. So, uh, like you see in this simple uh, illustration, you have two systems, system A and system B. They have to exchange information. The purpose, uh, the final purpose of this information exchange is, of, of course, to uh, uh, implement some uh, specific function, which is uh, the real uh, goal of the information exchange. Uh, so to give uh, a very simple uh, example, uh, I can have an electric vehicle, for example, which is the uh, system A in uh, the uh, 
in the picture, uh, you can have a charging uh, point, electrical vehicle charging point, uh, and uh, we, which is a second system, and these two systems uh, can, um, can uh, exchange uh, information uh, regarding the, the recharging process, for example, in this case, in order to uh, carry out the desired function, which is actually to, <laughs> to charge uh, the car. Um, of course, uh, this is quite simple when uh, you have uh, two systems, just two systems, like in this uh, picture. Uh, in general, uh, when we talk about uh, smart grids or even smart city, let's say, uh, the problem is that uh, you, you have uh, not, not just uh, two systems which need to, uh, to talk to each other, but uh, you have uh, uh, a lot of systems which uh, must be uh, integrated together and uh, somehow uh, need to be coordinated in order to implement uh, uh, useful function. In this case, uh, uh, of course, the interoperability problem is much more difficult than in the case of uh, just two systems because uh, uh, the scale of the problem is much uh, bigger. Um, so, uh, as uh, I already uh, said in the previous slide, uh, smart cities and smart grids in particular are uh, typically uh, very complex systems, so they require the integration of uh, a lot of systems which must uh, work uh, together. Uh, and uh, mm, for this reason, um, the adoption of standard solution, in this case we are talking about the standard ICT solution, um, uh, can uh, guarantee interoperability uh, even uh, in these uh, complex uh, scenarios. Um, and, uh, um, but in order for a standard solution to work uh, uh, in this uh, complex uh, setting, let's say, um, it is important uh, not only to uh, standardize uh, the lower level of the communication of the, of the, of the data exchange between uh, these uh, systems, um, but uh, uh, also to um, uh, let's say have a standardized description at uh, a higher level, uh, at the system level, um, in particular by uh, uh, standardized the meaning of the data that is uh, exchanged between uh, these systems. Uh, in order to be able to reach a higher level of uh, interoperability. Mm. In this way, uh, we can say that uh, uh, we can raise the value of uh, the data that is uh, exchanged because uh, each system can have uh, a more, uh, uh, let's say, minimum, uh, meaningful uh, understanding of uh, uh, the data that uh, is actually exchanged because this is enriched with the context information which can be useful in order to, um, to implement uh, uh, the needed functions. Uh, okay, what uh, uh, ICT standards uh, are uh, actually available? Uh, we are talking about uh, now specifically the smart grids domain in order to uh, fulfill uh, this uh, High level uh, idea of uh, uh, having uh, uh, semantic standards, let's say. Um, as uh, we will talk uh, a lot in this presentation, uh, the main focus uh, at the uh, IC level is about uh, these two standards, IC 61 and 50 and SIM, um, which uh, have uh, been developed. Uh, specifically to uh, address uh, these uh, um, interoperability problems uh, for the integration of uh, complex systems like the smart grids. Mm. So, uh, in accordance with the, the previous slides, uh, the main focus of uh, these standards is not uh, simply on defining uh, uh, low-level communication protocols, but uh, also they go to a higher level and they define uh, they, at least uh, their objective is to define uh, also the knowledge uh, associated to 
to the information that is uh, exchanged by devices by using uh, uh, data models, which are, uh, uh, let's say, abstract representations of uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, why uh, this is done? Uh, it, precisely for the, uh, the um, for allowing uh, the understanding of the information exchange between system uh, in uh, uh, an automated way. So if uh, all the system that need to exchange information uh, actually share the same uh, data model or the same uh, description of information that uh, is to be exchanged, then uh, they can uh, use this information in a more uh, meaningful way. This is uh, the idea. Um, of course, uh, uh, the lower level, which I was talking about, so the specification of uh, uh, communication protocols and the uh, actual uh, concrete means of exchange information is also specified by uh, this, uh, uh, these standards. Um, in particular, 61850 defines uh, uh, different communication protocols for exchange information between devices. Uh, SIM defines the communication protocols uh, oriented towards the um, integration of systems at the uh, enterprise uh, level. I will talk uh, more about this later. Uh, but uh, in any case, they also define uh, uh, ways for ex actually exchanging this information. But uh, they also add uh, this uh, higher level information in uh, the form of uh, data models. Uh, what is the, the, field of, the main field of application of this standard? It is uh, well summarized by this uh, picture, uh, which also shows uh, the, the main uh, domains and the zone associated to the electrical uh, domain. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, we can consider uh, 61850 as a standard which is more tied, tied to the uh, uh, let's say to the zone which uh, are uh, uh, more close to the process level, uh, so more close to the automation functions and so on, uh, while the SIM is a standard which is more uh, related to uh, uh, yes, enterprise uh, level functions. Uh, so you can think about uh, EMS uh, uh, systems, uh, the EMS or DMS, uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, and also uh, the market domain is uh, handled by SIM. Uh, you can see from this picture that the customer domain is actually uh, a separate domain <laughs> for, uh, for now. So uh, these standards uh, are related to the uh, handling of the electrical uh, power system. They are not concerned with uh, communication protocol used in uh, uh, home automation, for example, or things like that, because this is uh, outside of the scope uh, of these uh, uh, two standards. Um, just uh, one slide on uh, the arcade project instead, uh, because uh, uh, one of the purposes of this presentation is also to, uh, uh, to actually show how these uh, standards uh, have been uh, used in, uh, uh, in Arcade. Uh, so the main focus of the data, as you see from uh, this uh, uh, picture, uh, is about uh, uh, the validation process uh, for, uh, um, uh, for uh, let's say, smart grids uh, application. So it is very much uh, focused on, uh, um, uh, let's say, laboratory uh, validation of uh, uh, smart grid scenarios, uh, and in particular, uh, uh, the, uh, the target of uh, Airgrade is also about uh, developing an integrated research infrastructure for smart grid systems. So uh, at the European level, there are many uh, excellent uh, research centers in the smart grid domain. One uh, and one of the aims of uh, Airgrade uh, is also about uh, uh, harmonizing the uh, the way uh, in which this uh, various uh, research center um, can perform, uh, for example, uh, uh, laboratory validation or experimentation in uh, the, the domain. Uh, from the 
from this uh, focus, uh, you can uh, uh, already uh, see that uh, the topic of uh, um, interoperability and standardization is for sure in uh, of great interest for uh, uh, every grid. And uh, uh, for this reason, uh, the, the IC6150 and SIM standard have been taken into consideration uh, uh, within the project. As uh, I will illustrate more detail uh, later. Uh, now uh, I will start with a general, uh, let's say, presentation of uh, the IC6150 standard. So let's say from a uh, theoretical point of view, um, so a general presentation of the standards, and then uh, I will uh, uh, make a more specific. Uh, 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 illustration about uh, how these standards, uh, this standard 6150 has, have been uh, implemented in, uh, in every grade, uh, what kind of uh, software tools uh, we uh, have uh, used, and uh, what kind of uh, uh, also limitation and problems we found with this uh, standard in order to give, uh, let's say, first a theoretical overview of the standard and then a more, uh, let's say, concrete uh, presentation of how it has, uh, it can be used in a grid environment. Um, so as a quick introduction, uh, what is uh, 6150? Uh, it is, uh, of course, an IC standard, and uh, its uh, original uh, purpose uh, was uh, mainly focused uh, on uh, sub substation automation. So uh, in particular, as you can uh, see in the slide, the main uh, uh, purpose of the standard can be uh, highlighted by these two bullet points. So describing the device in, inside a substation uh, from a functional point of view uh, and uh, also uh, allowing uh, the exchange of this information in a standard way, uh, both uh, for uh, what regards the design and the configuration uh, phase of the devices, in this case the automation devices inside a substation, uh, and this is done through the use of uh, standard XML files, uh, and also during uh, the runtime uh, uh, working of the automation system, uh, in this case through the use of uh, communi proper communication protocols defined uh, also by the standard. Uh, so, the main focus is uh, substation automation, uh, but uh, since uh, in that domain the standard uh, had a great uh, uh, success, let's say, uh, uh, it is also being uh, extended uh, to many uh, smart grid domain, uh, and uh, this, uh, this process of uh, extension of the use of the standard outside of uh, the uh, substation uh, is uh, uh, still ongoing, let's say, but uh, uh, it's a process which uh, is going on uh, uh, from uh, a good number of years now, uh, and so there are already some uh, some concrete examples of uh, uh, its use. Uh, regarding the, the data model uh, provided by 61850, this is uh, uh, let's say the semantic level which I was talking about uh, in, the, in the first uh, introductory slide. Uh, so the uh, 6150 actually defines uh, an abstract data model for describing uh, all the devices uh, uh, in a substation. You can think so you can think about uh, measuring uh, uh, measuring device, uh, protection device, and so on. Uh, which can be described in a standard way using the 61850 data model. So if you think about a breaker, for example, uh, you have uh, a standard uh, naming and a standard set of properties for uh, these, uh, these objects, which then uh, are, um, let's say, fixed for uh, every vendor. And this uh, uh, allows uh, semantic interoperability for uh, uh, substation uh, automation devices in particular. Uh, this uh, uh, data model can be uh, actually uh, expressed uh, through the use of uh, uh, standard XML files. Uh, and uh, for example, a whole description of uh, the substation 
uh, automation system can be realized by using a, a particular file which is called the nest cd the substation population distinction and uh, 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 in this way it is possible to specify uh, in a interoperable way let's say the, the uh, all uh, uh, the information related to a particular substation automation code. Um, a quick overview of the intended process for the substation automation. Of course, the first uh, uh, step when uh, designing a substation automation, pro automation process is to, uh, to actually draw uh, a single line diagram of the power equipment involved in uh, the project. So, uh, uh, 61850 actually uh, uh, defines uh, in a very deep detail all of this uh, engineering process, starting from the drawing of the single line diagram, going through the specification of the automation functions. Uh, this is the first step, of course. Uh, so the idea is to just be able to draw uh, a single line diagram and to also represent this uh, starting point, the single line diagram in a standard way um, uh, for a standardized XML file, as uh, I already uh, said in the previous slide. Um, so uh, the, uh, the idea is that uh, engineering tools which are uh, compliant with uh, the 6150 workflow uh, actually allow to uh, draw a single line diagram like the one shown here and uh, they are able to generate uh, automatically and uh, um, in a way that is uh, uh, let's say invisible for the end user they are able to generate uh, the standard uh, uh, xml file uh, automatically starting from uh, this row uh, then uh, after the uh, the the power uh, equipment has been uh, specified. Uh, the next step in the process would be to add, uh, actually add the automation functions to, uh, uh, to this uh, single line diagram uh, by using uh, the uh, 6150 data model, which uh, I illustrated before. Um, actually, here you see an example where uh, uh, the different uh, blocks that you see here, like uh, which uh, all have a name composed of four uh, characters, are, uh, uh, let's say, pieces of uh, the 61850 data model describing uh, different, uh, uh, different devices uh, inside uh, the substation, which can be uh, actual uh, power devices, like, for example, breakers, uh, uh, transformer, uh, transformers and so on, uh, or uh, associated uh, uh, control function like uh, uh, function for uh, 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 protection or uh, uh, controlling of uh, the breaker and uh, so on. Mm -hmm. All of this uh, information can be specified by using these uh, little blocks that you see in this, uh, in this picture. Uh, you can uh, then associate these uh, little blocks to the actual power equipment uh, you, you have in the single line diagram and uh, produce uh, another uh, standard XML file, which is called the uh, uh, SSD, uh, System Specification Distinction. Uh, in this way, you have uh, now a first uh, uh, idea of uh, the substation automation project, uh, which is uh, already uh, more advanced than the Single, single line diagram. Uh, then, uh, step, uh, uh, next step is to take these blocks that uh, you, uh, uh, you have drawn in the previous step and to actually uh, allocate them to uh, a, a real device which uh, implements this, uh, this block. For example, here you can see a picture taken from uh, uh, from uh, ABB, of course, because you can see an ABB, uh, <laughs> ABB device in, uh, in the picture. Um, uh, but uh, uh, the overall idea is to um, uh, uh, just uh, take a device which implements these building blocks that you want to use and uh, uh, actually uh, place this specific device in, uh, in your project. Um, 
know, 6150 devices are called uh, uh, IDs, which is, uh, stands for uh, Intelligent Electronic Device. Uh, and this is just the standard technology for 6150. Uh, this is a picture uh, summarizing the whole process, which is a uh, very um, very detailed, as you can see, and uh, it involves the use of many different uh, types of uh, XML files, which can be exchanged between uh, 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 different uh, configuration systems and engineering uh, tools. Uh, but without uh, going into the details of this uh, uh, picture, uh, uh, the idea is just to uh, being able uh, at every step of the engineering process of a substation automation uh, project uh, to describe uh, uh, the step through the use of uh, an XML file uh, and uh, also finally to be able to configure each uh, single uh, ID uh, uh, with uh, a standard file generated from uh, the project. Uh, so this is uh, the idea. Uh, so it, it is a very complete, uh, complete specification of uh, uh, substation automation uh, applications. Uh, okay, this is very, uh, very detailed and very uh, good for uh, substation automation, but uh, um, the idea, uh, at least for a uh, grade of course, or uh, uh, smart grid application in general is also to go outside of the, sub of the substation uh, and uh, uh, then we will see in later slide how to handle this. Uh, now a quick uh, uh, additional slide on the actual communication protocols which can be used for the communication between devices. Here you see um, uh, a picture illustrating the, the protocols which can be used. In particular, uh, there are uh, protocols like the GOOS protocol, which can be used for uh, um, a fast uh, horizontal communication, peer to peer communication between uh, automation devices. Uh, and uh, there are, while the MMS protocol, which uh, you can see on the left uh, and the side of the picture, is uh, uh, related to client server interaction between uh, uh, devices, uh, typically slower uh, interaction. As you can see in this slide, I have uh, 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 on the right part, uh, I mentioned in the client server uh, part uh, the MMS protocol, which is, uh, let's say, the standard. Uh, now the, right now, the only protocol available to use for 6150. Uh, also, there is in development uh, another protocol which can be used, with, which is specifically devoted to smart grids application, uh, which is uh, the XMPP protocol. Uh, this mapping is not yet uh, published, uh, but uh, uh, probably the standard with the XMPP protocol will will be published, uh, uh, I think, later this year or, uh, or the next year, but uh, not, uh, not too far away. Uh, but uh, however, right now it's not yet published. The idea is to use uh, XMPP uh, because uh, uh, XMPP is a very good protocol for communicating uh, over uh, the internet. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, a lot of uh, connected devices, uh, which, uh, uh, for example, have to communicate over uh, uh, small, uh, net, uh, uh, let's say, slow networks, or uh, in general, uh, normal internet connections, like uh, uh, you will have in the many smart grids and um, uh, So this is a protocol which is very interesting from a smart grid point of view. Uh, right now, it is not uh, yet uh, uh, available, but the standard is uh, at a good uh, development point, so it will be published, uh, I think, this year. Uh, in, yes, what is the main uh, conceptual difference then between uh, the client-server protocols and the peer-to-peer -peer protocols 
in general, if you if we come back to the substation automation uh, scenario, uh, you can see for clearly from this picture that typically uh, the goose protocol or uh, also the SB protocols are used for uh, uh, horizontal communication between uh, IDs. Uh, IDs in this picture can be, for example, protection devices, circuit breaker, and so on. Um, so if these devices need to communicate uh, uh, at a peer-to-peer -peer level, they can use the boost protocol. While typically uh, the vertical traffic, so-called vertical traffic, can, uh, um, uh, can be implemented by uh, a client-server uh, pattern via the uh, MMS uh, protocol. Uh, this slide also illustrates uh, uh, two different kind of buses which uh, are uh, uh, defined by 61850, the process bus and the, the station bus. Uh, the process, uh, the station bus uh, is uh, the one, uh, the main bus which connects the, uh, the different uh, EADs with, uh, for example, the central SCADA and uh, so on, while uh, the process bus is the one that you see on the left on the left hand side of uh, the picture here uh, and uh, it is uh, a bus which can be used um, to interconnect uh, uh, EADs uh, uh, with for example digital uh, uh, measuring devices uh, for example uh, digital uh, TA or TVs for example uh, we, uh, because uh, you can have uh, 61850 devices uh, which uh, uh, actually send uh, uh, measurement value already digitalized in 61850 format using this, uh, this protocol the sample uh, values. Uh, and uh, this is uh, another uh, let's say separated bus which can be uh, used in 61850. Um, okay, but this is uh, more or less uh, all about uh, substation automation. As I was said, uh, the main uh, interest in a uh, smart grid environment is to actually use uh, this uh, kind of protocols and the standards and uh, data models and so on, uh, not only inside uh, a single substation, but to be able to use it also uh, outside of the substation. For example, in this picture, I show uh, a kind of, uh, let's say, microgrid scenario in which you have many uh, distributed generators, storage devices, and so on, which uh, must be uh, managed. And uh, okay, this is clearly a different scenario from the substation automation uh, uh, use cases which uh, we have seen uh, in previous slides. So how to apply uh, 61850 to this uh, uh, different scenario? Uh, well, the, as I already said, the perspective is the actually at protocol level to use the XMPP protocol instead, instead of uh, uh, MMS because uh, XMPP is more uh, suitable for uh, this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, scenarios, uh, in particular for internet uh, communication. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, also to define, uh, uh, to extend the data model of 61850 in order to cope uh, with all these uh, new devices, which uh, you see, for example, illustrated in, uh, in this picture. Um, uh, this, uh, this process of uh, extension of uh, the 61850 standard is uh, ongoing. Uh, it is not uh, complete at, uh, as of uh, today. Uh, there are some uh, standards already available, for example, uh, uh, the one you see least uh, credited for this picture, 61850 uh, which is uh, related uh, in particular to distributed energy resources. Uh, uh, but uh, in, uh, in general, uh, uh, this uh, kind of standards are uh, still uh, under uh, development. Uh, and so they are not yet fully uh, available for use in this uh, kind of scenario. In particular, the XMPT mapping is not yet uh, published uh, at all. Uh, 
so from uh, uh, coming back to the aggregate project, what are uh, what is the applicability of these standards with respect to aggregate? What are the main advantages and disadvantages related to it? Uh, well, as you can uh, uh, see from the previous slides, the main advantages are that, uh, uh, of course, uh, it define, uh, defines the standard semantics for, uh, in principle, uh, every, uh, every object in uh, a smart grid environment, or at least uh, in a substation environment. Uh, it uh, defines uh, a very detailed uh, engineering process uh, for the uh, uh, substation automation, which uh, actually allows uh, a very uh, uh, precise uh, development uh, uh, methodology uh, to be applied for uh, uh, the implementation of such uh, systems. And of course, it is a uh, globally accepted and uh, implemented standard. Uh, again, uh, almost uh, all the devices, the commercial devices, which you find uh, at the moment uh, are not really related to or directly related to smart gates uh, application. For example, uh, I think you cannot, you can't uh, find uh, 6150 inverters or so on. Uh, they are mainly related to substation automation. Uh, but uh, as I said in the previous slide, the perspective is to widen the application of the standard also to uh, the smart gate domain. Uh, then uh, coming to the main disadvantages of this uh, standard with uh, relation to uh, air grade in particular uh, and to smart grade application in general. Uh, it must be said that the standard is quite complex. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, 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 different uh, XML files, for example, which must be managed, and uh, uh, also the data model is very big and very uh, complex, and so on. So it's not very straightforward uh, to use as a standard. Uh, then, uh, as I already said, the DR and distribution automation extension are still under development. Uh, the new XMPV protocol for uh, smart grid is still under development. Uh, and so right now it is a bit difficult to use the 61 and 50, for example, over the over internet connections, uh, at least uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, for security problems which must be addressed and so on. And, uh, and also finally, uh, uh, getting access to the, the Google standard can be difficult also because the standard is composed of many different uh, uh, documents, uh, uh, actually a lot of documents, so also this can be a, a difficulty. Um, so from this uh, uh, collection of uh, advantages and disadvantages, how uh, do we um, proceed uh, at a more practical way in every grade uh, to uh, support the standard uh, and uh, to cope with the, the, the problems, let's say, which are listed uh, here. Uh, well, the idea in uh, every grade is that, uh, of course, uh, we are interested in using the standard because uh, in perspective it is uh, a, very, uh, a very crucial uh, smart grid standard. Uh, in order to uh, cope with the difficulties, for example, of, use, of using it uh, over internet as it is, uh, the idea is the one illustrated uh, here. Uh, we, uh, the approach was about uh, first uh, building uh, a virtual uh, interconnection between uh, the participating facilities in uh, grid, uh, and then one that this virtual connection uh, which is uh, actually realized uh, over uh, simple internet connections, is uh, uh, available. The idea is that uh, uh, you have uh, a kind of uh, uh, virtual uh, local bus, let's say, between uh, all the different research infrastructures. And then uh, at this point, uh, it is quite uh, straightforward to apply uh, 61850 uh, to this uh, virtualized uh, environment. 
Okay. So this is uh, the main uh, idea. Um, uh, and uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to say why <laughs> we are uh, uh, performing this uh, interconnection. Uh, actually, one of the research activities of the Regret project is uh, specifically devoted to uh, implementing uh, a remote interconnection of uh, the different research infrastructure uh, for uh, the purpose of uh, performing, for example, joint uh, uh, tests uh, in, uh, uh, by exchanging, uh, let's say, data uh, online. Uh, so this is the, the main uh, driver for this application. And uh, the idea is to uh, use 6150 in this uh, uh, virtualized environment for connecting uh, facilities uh, over the internet. Actually, this is the high-level idea. Also, the software used to implement this has been uh, actually, of course, implemented in Regrid and also made available as uh, open source uh, products. Uh, so, the idea is also to allow the reuse of this kind of uh, solution to other third parties. Um, some of details about this uh, interconnection. Uh, this uh, platform actually for the connection of uh, research infrastructure is called the Thunder. And uh, <coughs> sorry, it is uh, structured on uh, three levels. The level zero is actually this uh, virtual. Uh, virtualized bus, which I was talking about in the previous slide. Uh, then there is uh, the level one, which is the, the 6150 interface, which is uh, applied on top of this uh, virtualization solution, let's say. Uh, and uh, also there is, uh, of course, the SIM part, uh, which uh, will be described in, uh, in a later slides, actually. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, SIM level is, is also uh, applied on the same uh, virtualized uh, solution uh, implemented by Level Zero. So Level Zero is the fundamental level used to interconnect facilities. Uh, then uh, you have a, a standardized solution of, on top of this uh, virtual uh, connection bus. That's it. How do we uh, actually implement uh, this bus? This is uh, the more uh, lower level uh, details, but it is important to uh, show how uh, we actually implemented this. Uh, the idea is to use uh, um, uh, a real time repository uh, for uh, one for each uh, research infrastructure, which must be collected, which you see on the left hand side of this uh, picture, uh, which uh, um, collects uh, all the uh, or the needed uh, measurements and control, which must be uh, shared on the bus uh, from uh, uh, the existing uh, SCADA system or uh, general control software, which is available at the research infrastructure. Uh, and then uh, the idea is to develop, uh, to implement a simple uh, uh, central broker, which is shown at the right hand part of this picture. Uh, hosted on a cloud uh, platform, which uh, just uh, acts uh, as, a, uh, as a central broker, uh, let's say, for uh, the exchanging of uh, measurements and control. And uh, each facility can connect to this uh, central uh, uh, communication platform with uh, uh, a standard uh, internet connection based on uh, HTTPS, uh, of course, uh, with uh, um, uh, bidirectional authentication, so the use of uh, certi security certificates for both the, the client side and the server side for security reasons, of course. Um, but uh, uh, as you can see, in this way, it is possible to uh, implement uh, uh, the virtual bus, which I was talking about uh, uh, in previous slides, in a very simple way, and in particular by just uh, using uh, a standard uh, internet connection without uh, any other uh, uh, firewall problems or uh, uh, remote connection problems or so on. Uh, all that is uh, required for each infrastructure is uh, a normal uh, uh, internet connection. Uh, and also a good point is that uh, uh, 
all uh, this uh, each infrastructure doesn't have to expose uh, any or to open uh, any TCP port to the external world. So uh, this is also an important uh, security feature, let's say. Uh, the software used to implement this uh, is uh, uh, also released as uh, open source. Uh, I list here the, uh, uh, the reference uh, download uh, link if you are interested in watching it. Uh, then uh, the idea, as uh, I already said, is to apply 61 and 50 over this uh, uh, virtual bus. How does this work? Uh, you can see a quick sketch in this picture, in particular on the left hand side. Uh, you can see that uh, each research infrastructure has its real time repository, as I said uh, before, uh, related to uh, the, the virtual bus. And on top of this repository, it can uh, actually execute a 61850 uh, interface. Uh, which uh, uh, actually connects to the real-time repository and uh, exposes the contents of the real-time repository, which are uh, actually typically measurements and controls from uh, a SCADA system uh, with uh, the 61850 protocol. In this way, it is possible to uh, have uh, a 61850 interface between different facilities um, uh, by using uh, uh, a standard uh, MMS communication without uh, any uh, security problem, of course, because the actual MMS communication is uh, local to only one research infrastructure, then the remote, uh, uh, let's say, the internet uh, transmission of this uh, uh, data is handled by the virtual bus. So uh, this is a way uh, in order to uh, say decouple the deployment of 6150 from the problem of uh, 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 having a wide area uh, information exchange between uh, research infrastructures. Um, also, this interface uh, is available uh, as open source. Uh, actually, uh, the 6150 uh, interface by itself uh, is based on a an open source library which is already available and developed by the Fraunhofer uh, IC Institute, uh, which is called the Open IC 61850. Uh, in any grade, uh, it was uh, developed the interfacing of this library to the real time repository, and, uh, uh, and also this software is available as open source. So, so here I list the, uh, the link. So it, it's uh, uh, it can be tried out if, uh, if you are interested. And this is uh, uh, more or less about how we <coughs> implemented the 6150 in a way that allowed uh, us to overcome the main uh, problems which uh, I have listed uh, in the previous slide uh, related to internet communication with the 6150 and, uh, and so on. Uh, of course, another good uh, uh, another good uh, characteristic of this architecture is that uh, um, if you need a different protocol from 61850, you can, uh, of course, uh, develop another interfacing module um, and uh, uh, apply it with the same principle uh, as, uh, as a 61850. Um, and uh, this is actually uh, what uh, we have done also in Renegade because uh, if you remember, we also use uh, uh, the, the SIM uh, data model uh, and uh, uh, information exchange. Uh, and uh, uh, this is also based uh, on uh, uh, the basic virtual bus which we have uh, implemented. And uh, this is the topic of uh, this second part of the presentation, second and last part actually of the presentation. Uh, now I will give a brief uh, uh, overview of uh, the common information model in general, and then uh, I will uh, present uh, also the grid uh, developments for this part. So what is the common information model? Also, uh, SIM, like 6150, defines a data model, uh, or actually it is a data model, it is called the common
common information model uh, representing uh, uh, the main resources for the management of uh, the electric system. So uh, the, the SIM is a UML data model uh, and its purpose is to represent in principle all uh, the resources related to uh, the electric system and uh, the relationships between uh, them. Uh, so for example, this is a quick example of a UML diagram taken from SIM. Uh, this is the typical structures which uh, you see if you look at the SIM data model. Um, uh, you have, uh, for example, the description of a switch class, uh, which uh, is a specialization of uh, a more abstract class, which is again a specialization of a more uh, abstract class, and so on. Um, so the idea is to use a UML <coughs> as a modeling language in order to define uh, knowledge related to the electrical system in this uh, uh, very, um, let's say, abstract uh, way, but very also powerful way uh, system. Then, uh, using uh, again UML, it's also possible to, for example, uh, define association between different uh, concepts, uh, like, for example, in this case, the relations between uh, a protected switch, like a breaker or a recloser, as you see here, with uh, uh, associated protection equipment, for example. And this can be also expressed using uh, the SIM and using the UML uh, language in this way, as shown here. Uh, another thing which is possible to express is, uh, for example, aggregation. So, <clears throat> as you see from this example, you can say that uh, uh, a geographical region is composed, this symbol represents the composition, is composed by many sub uh, or uh, many yes, sub geographical regions and the sub geographical region contains uh, in principle many substations many substation and each substation contains in principle many voltage level and uh, so on this is uh, another uh, <coughs> thing which can be expressed in uh, uh, in uh, sim uh, and so uh, basically uh, the sim in uh, in its uh, whole uh, uh, definition is a big uh, UML data model uh, drawn in a way like this uh, with the uh, definition of the concepts, association between concepts and so on. Uh, so here you see a, let's say, a representative uh, picture of the whole uh, thing. You see that you have uh, uh, specialization of concepts, uh, associations, uh, of uh, uh, composition relations and uh, all uh, all these kind of uh, uh, constructs, let's say, are used to uh, represent in an abstract way uh, the structure of uh, uh, or all the objects related to the power system. Um, this is an abstract model. How it can be used or how it is used uh, when the main application context are First of all, the standardized representation of electrical networks. Uh, then uh, there is a part, a uh, specific part of the, of the SIM for the management of the electrical market. <clears throat> and then there is another part, very interesting, for uh, managing the system integrations at uh, uh, so the integration of different uh, software systems at the uh, uh, utility level. Uh, regarding the first application context, uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, use uh, the different uh, classes and concepts and association defined uh, in the SIM UML in order to represent, for example, an electrical circuit. And uh, uh, in this way, you obtain a standardized representation of the circuit, as, uh, for example, shown in this uh, uh, simple example, where you have different uh, SIM objects like uh, breaker, uh, terminals, and so on. And uh, you can uh, associate instances of these uh, objects in order to actually build uh, uh, an electrical network, which will then uh, be uh, expressed in a standardized way. Uh, also, similarly to 61850, typically uh, people will just uh, 
make a drawing of a network and a proper software system will actually generate automatically the SIM data model from uh, the drawing. So uh, it is not expected that people really see the, the SIM data model <laughs> when the, they, uh, uh, they use it. They will just, uh, in the case of electrical networks, make a drawing. And uh, the, uh, as you can see from this uh, screenshot, the software system can automatically generate the kind of information that you see on the, uh, on the left hand side. So if you draw a breaker, it will create a SIM breaker with the properties uh, for SIM by SIM and so on. And this, in this way, you will have uh, a standardized representation of this uh, drawing. Uh, also, SIM re supports uh, geographical representation, so this is a similar concept to the, the previous. You can also draw uh, like a GIS system a network and have it represented using uh, SIM automatically. Uh, they are just a different kind of uh, SIM objects like uh, shown. Um, what, uh, what are the current uh, usages of the SIM uh, data model? Uh, well, the main uh, user, let's say, of SIM, or the main uh, uh, yes, say user of the SIM is the uh, NSOE or the NSOE partners, actually, the different European TSO. Um, since uh, different TSOs have to exchange uh, operational and grid planning uh, data uh, very, uh, on a regular basis and so uh, SIM is mandated for uh, this kind of uh, data exchanges um, and uh, for this reason um, uh, many, uh, many software systems or in principle all, all the software systems used by uh, TSOs for uh, operational and grid planning uh, actually support uh, the SIM and uh, on the ENSOE site uh, you can find actually a list of uh, software uh, tools which uh, support the SIM. Uh, basically all, uh, all the typical uh, tools, uh, so uh, I don't know, Neplan, Pixel and uh, other uh, specific tools uh, of course uh, support uh, uh, the SIM uh, data model as uh, defined by ENSOE. Uh, also, uh, mm, uh, the SIM data model is required to implement a series of uh, uh, European network codes, uh, in particular the one on uh, capacity calculation and congestion management, and the one on uh, system operation. So <clears throat> SIM is also relevant with respect to uh, network codes. Uh, and uh, the perspective is also to apply this kind of uh, standard for a future uh, information exchange between uh, uh, TSOs and DSOs, for example, mm. and this is quite uh, natural because since uh, TSOs are, are already using uh, the SIM. Uh, another interesting uh, uh, initiative from uh, ENSOE is uh, the building of this uh, uh, interoperability platform for connecting uh, all the, the TSOs in, uh, in uh, Europe, of course. Uh, and this is a kind of, uh, let's say, service-oriented uh, architecture which is being uh, implemented at uh, ENSOE level uh, and it is uh, fully based on, uh, on SIM also. Uh, and so <clears throat> this is a very interesting uh, platform which is now being uh, implemented at the European level and uh, which uh, shows uh, the great uh, power of uh, SIM, let's say, for guaranteeing uh, interoperability in this kind of uh, applications. Uh, then uh, a quick uh, view for uh, the extension of SIM to the energy market. This is not uh, generally the of interest of very great, but just for completeness. There are parts of the SIM which uh, uh, deal with the uh, um, uh, management of the market, and you can find here a reference to the relevant standards. Uh, then, for uh, utility system integration, 
uh, the idea is to use a SIM for uh, interconnecting, for example, the kind of system that you see uh, listed here. Uh, how to interconnect? Uh, well, by using an architecture like the one shown here. Uh, if you um, actually implement a kind of uh, bus, service bus, which uh, connects all the different uh, systems which you see here, which can be part of an EMN. Uh, an EMS structure, for example. Uh, if all the system use an, uh, a SIM interface, they can be integrated more easily and more uh, interoperably. Mm -hmm. This is the idea. Uh, this was actually of interest, uh, is actually of interest in Renegade because, uh, the, in particular, the SCALA interface uh, is. Uh, uh, also used by Renegade, as you can, uh, you, as you have seen in the previous uh, slide about the Jander uh, platform. And uh, then the idea was, uh, in Renegade, was uh, to also uh, implement a kind of a SIM-based uh, interface for uh, uh, the SCADA system, uh, in a similar way as done for uh, uh, 6150, of course. Mm -hmm. How does uh, this uh, work? Well, in principle, the idea is that uh, if you have a SCADA system, then this uh, SCADA system can implement a SIM interface towards the, the higher level services shown in the previous slide. And uh, while towards the, the field, let's say, it can implement uh, any kind of uh, field uh, uh, protocol, like, for example, 61850 in this case, uh, as an example, but uh, in principle, any other kind of uh, uh, of uh, protocol. So the SCADA system uh, is somehow represents the connection between uh, the field uh, world uh, where 61 and 50 can be applied and uh, the SIM world where uh, more uh, higher level services can be applied. Uh, from a regret point of view, this is interesting because uh, it means that uh, if you implement this uh, SIM interface, uh, you can uh, um, uh, you can uh, allow the integration of uh, also higher level services uh, into the Jander platform, like uh, the services shown in the previous uh, slide. And this can be uh, interesting for my uh, research infrastructure integration point of view. Uh, going uh, specifically into every grid, uh, we have actually implemented the, the Scala SIM interface shown in the previous slide. Uh, of course, this is, uh, uh, it, must be, uh, it must be said that this uh, SIM Scala interface uh, as a standard is not uh, uh, yet fully available. So um, the one which has been implemented in every data is based on uh, a draft uh, standard which is available, but uh, of course it's not a fully final uh, interoperable solution because uh, simply because the SIM scale interface is not yet fully available. Uh, but it was an interesting uh, uh, preliminary test, let's say, for this interface. And uh, then, uh, uh, in order to actually show how this interface can be used, uh, also. Um, uh, demonstration uh, uh, graphical user interface has been uh, used and integrated with this uh, SCADA service. Uh, and so actually it is uh, possible by using this uh, tool, which is also open source from, uh, from the link you can see here. You can, in principle, uh, define a SIM networks in a graphical way, as you can see here. And uh, um, also uh, connect to the SIM uh, SCADA developed in, uh, in every day. Uh, of course, uh, to do this, uh, you, have, you need to have the proper uh, uh, cyber security permission. So, uh, what you can test in the open source uh, product is uh, just the drawing of the SIM network. Of course, uh, you cannot test the, <laughs> um, uh, the SCADA connection because uh, uh, it, is, it is not a, uh, an open uh, uh, connection for all these uh, cyber security reasons. Uh, 
uh, but uh, the graphical tool is uh, available uh, for, uh, for free. Mm -hmm. And this is the idea. This is a more schematic view of how we implemented the whole, uh, uh, the whole thing, uh, or uh, an example of a possible application. Uh, the graphical uh, user interface program, which is at the bottom of the picture, uh, actually connects uh, to the scale interface, uh, <coughs> which is uh, based uh, on the same real-time repository of uh, level zero, which I told uh, before. And uh, in principle, the same uh, interface can also use all the other uh, SIM services like, uh, for example, as foreseen in a data state estimator uh, service, which can take uh, a SIM uh, representation in input, make a state estimation, and give uh, the results in output, all uh, in a way that is conformable to the SIM uh, data model. So this is the idea for uh, uh, the gender level 2 implementation in uh, any grid. Uh, and that's uh, uh, about uh, all uh, for this presentation. And the main point is that uh, uh, the development of uh, smart grids needs the integration of many different systems. So we need the proper uh, standards like uh, 6150 and uh, SIM in particular for what regards the, the smart grid domain. Um, every grid actually uh, implemented both of these uh, standards and uh, used uh, uh, a new uh, virtual bus concept in order to uh, make it easier to connect uh, over uh, many different research infrastructure connected by simple uh, internet connection. Uh, and therefore, the, the very grid uh, infrastructure is based on a layered approach, which uh, uh, allows uh, uh, both to integrate the standards in a gradual way, uh, and uh, also to be open to uh, other eventual uh, future standards and so on. Uh, and finally, uh, most uh, of the uh, software implemented uh, for, this, uh, 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 for this infrastructure are actually available as uh, uh, open source. So this is uh, uh, the idea is also to allow uh, the reuse and the modification and the testing of this uh, kind of the solution to uh, everybody who may be interested in it. Uh, and this is uh, uh, all for my presentation. Uh, I don't know if there are uh, any comments or questions. So first of all, uh, Daniele, thank you very much for the very interesting webinar. Uh, uh, we have, before we uh, finalize the webinar today, uh, uh, time for some questions and uh, also we want to sh uh, give you at the end of the webinar some information about uh, some uh, possi exchange possibilities that we can offer in the Irrigate project, but uh, that comes uh, after they are an answering our, uh, the questions. Uh, we got one uh, question from uh, Mr. Franzel. He asked, what problems did you experience when using MMS to connect 6150 servers and clients over the internet? Uh, that was the first question. Uh, can you give an answer, uh, Daniele, please? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, um, the, uh, the problems uh, were based on the fact that uh, the, uh, the use case to be implemented uh, uh, required the interconnection of uh, different research infrastructure um, over uh, the internet. Um, actually, uh, uh, the use of MMS would uh, uh, have required at least uh, the, that each research infrastructure install an uh, MMS uh, server in their uh, uh, network and uh, uh, they uh, then uh, need to uh, open uh, all their uh, firewall, uh, corporate firewall uh, ports and so on, in order to allow uh, the MMS uh, traffic uh, to flow uh, in. Uh, then, of course, uh, the MMS protocol by itself uh, doesn't offer any cyber security. Then, typically, you need to add uh, uh, or some uh, uh, 
standardized solution like uh, TLS and so on as uh, required by the standard or uh, a kind of uh, VPN, for example, in order to connect the different facilities. Uh, but uh, all of this uh, kind of solution actually require some uh, um, difficult uh, um, firewall setup or uh, uh, dealing uh, with uh, security policies in each uh, research infrastructure, which uh, are very difficult to uh, to change and uh, to um, uh, to cope with. Uh, while the solution implemented in Regrid actually requires only a normal internet connection, so uh, you don't need uh, any firewall setup. Uh, uh, you don't need any static uh, IP address, for example, uh, and uh, so it, it's a great uh, simplification for the actual implementation of the connection. So, oh, and we have uh, guys, another question uh, uh, from Mr. Franzl regarding how real time is the Chandra repository, which time lags and variances are allowed, and uh, when do you expect SIM to become a stable standard? Uh, okay, so uh, the first uh, question, sorry, I didn't get it very well. Uh, the first, how real time is the Chandra repository, which time lags and variances are allowed? Ah, okay. Uh, yes, uh, the, um, the Jander uh, solution being based on an e on internet connection is clearly uh, not uh, targeted to very fast uh, use cases, let's say, or very fast data exchanging. Um, uh, so typically, uh, you can think of uh, uh, use cases like uh, uh, centralized voltage control uh, in a microgrid environment or things like that, which uh, uh, don't require a very fast uh, uh, monitoring or a very fast uh, response from uh, uh, the control system. Uh, to give some numbers, um, it is uh, indeed possible to transfer uh, some thousands of, uh, of measurements between facilities uh, in about uh, uh, five, uh, 500 milliseconds, let's say. So this is the kind of, uh, uh, of uh, performance which you can expect. Of course, uh, if you have to transfer uh, much less uh, measurements, uh, you can have a good uh, uh, and much better uh, performance, but uh, this uh, uh, finally depends on the quality of the internet connection that is available between the facility, and this is not really very uh, predictable to a certain degree. So uh, you will always have to take this uh, into account. Um, and then uh, the other question was about uh, the SIM standard, when uh, uh, it will be uh, mature if I got uh, it uh, right. Um, uh, well, uh, it, it depends on the um, application. Uh, regarding the application uh, required for NSOE, for example, the SIM is very, already very uh, mature and uh, it's, it is already used. If you refer to the SCADA uh, standard, which uh, I uh, mentioned uh, for Jander, uh, uh, this is actually uh, now at a very preliminary uh, stage. Uh, and uh, I think it will be quite uh, some years before uh, it uh, will be released uh, before, because uh, it is really at uh, the starting point of the standardization uh, process. And uh, you know that IC standardization is not very, <laughs> very fast. <laughs> so I think it will be for sure some years before it, it will be released. So there is a question uh, from Mr. Uh, some questions from Mr. Ali. The first one: Will the PowerPoint be available? Yes, uh, we will uh, upload uh, all the material from this webinar, the recordings from this webinar, together with the uh, presentation to our project website. We provide you the uh, links to uh, both in, both uh, documents, the recordings, and the uh, presentation uh, afterwards when it's available on the website. It uh, might take some some days, but we will do. Uh, 
we'll try to do it as fast as possible. Uh, another question from Mr. Ali is, can we have access to RTDS from an, any AeroGrid partner uh, for your project result validation? Um, uh, yes, so if the question is uh, if uh, mm, RTDS can be connected to the Jander platform, uh, the answer is uh, yes, of course, because uh, like uh, uh, like uh, the Ascela system, <clears throat> in a similar way, you can connect uh, uh, RTDS, of course. Um, the, uh, the thing to I highlight, of course, uh, is that, uh, uh, as I already said in relation to the previous uh, answer, uh, gender is not, uh, uh, is not uh, supposed to be a, a real-time platform in the sense of uh, strict real-time uh, 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 performances because uh, uh, it uses uh, internet communication and so on, uh, so it is more targeted to, uh, let's say, uh, slower use cases. <laughs> and, uh, and so the answer is yes, you can use, uh, you can interface RTDS to the, the gender, uh, but uh, um, uh, gender is not a real-time platform by itself. Yeah, and, uh, um, in addition, uh, we have, as I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago, we have in Irigrid uh, project uh, an activity that is called transnational access. So that uh, is an activity where we share our laboratories that are overall 19 laboratories. So you can see it here on the, on the screen. That's from our uh, corresponding website uh, where we have also uh, this kind of real-time simulation systems available. And in the Irigrid project, we can offer for you free access to our laboratories, uh, co cover all the traveling and accommodation fees. You don't need to pay any, uh, the access to the to the labs also. Um, what we are requesting for that, and that's the general rules of the European Commission, is that you have to apply for a specific project that is typically from one to four uh, weeks long, so on average, I would say. Um, we have currently a call open, so we are open every six months calls. So uh, the next one will close by 15th of May. Uh, if you are interested in our lab capabilities and you have something, uh, some work that you want to to test, that you want to uh, show in in a lab uh, environment, from uh, we can offer you here uh, access. You need to write the um, kind of mini proposal. So the application process is uh, shown here on the website. So please uh, have a look at. Uh, uh, at the details, if you're interested and you're kindly invited to submit uh, proposals, uh, they will be afterwards evaluated. And in case they have sufficient quality, you will be invited to come to our laboratories. All the details can be found here on the website. Currently, we have uh, gained access to about 33 uh, external user projects. The main One of the main requirements is that you are coming from uh, a country that is uh, outside of the hosting infrastructure. So that means, for example, if you want to go to uh, EIT uh, in Austria, then you need to come from outside of Austria. We also uh, have the possibility to host non-European uh, user groups. So that is also possible. I hope that uh, explains this question. Um, Let's uh, have a look to, uh, to the following question. There are uh, a couple of questions. There's one uh, uh, from Mr. Katakian, uh, suggestion from your side for potential research area in the communication protocol. So uh, I think uh, he means what what, uh, what is our research activity in, uh, related to uh, smart grid communication protocols? Maybe, Daniele, you can uh, elaborate uh, here a bit on this question. Uh, yes, from my point of view, uh, for what regards uh, smart grid uh, communications, uh, the main um, uh, let's say issues related to communication protocols are mainly the one that uh, um, <coughs> I have listed. I have listed uh, somehow in relation to 6150. So uh, when you consider a smart grid communication, uh, you typically have to take into account. Uh, that you are communicating over uh, uh, internet uh, and typically uh, you have uh, you will have uh, problems with the uh, uh, with the firewalls or the or you will not be able to uh, allow incoming connection for example for security reasons and so on uh, so the main topics uh, i think are the, the use of uh, uh, push 
push uh, communication protocols like uh, XMPP, for example, for communicating over internet, uh, and uh, uh, in general, the possibility uh, having protocol that works good, uh, works uh, well uh, over uh, internet. Uh, then uh, other uh, topics, uh, for example, uh, which are of, uh, which can be of interest in uh, uh, the context of uh, uh, grid might be uh, uh, finding uh, uh, ways of uh, compensating the uh, the the delay associated to uh, the internet connection, uh, and this is a for sure topic which is a, a inter of uh, interest in uh, uh, in grid, uh, or uh, other topics related, for example, to scalability of the proposed solution. What happens if you have uh, uh, a billion of uh, <laughs> communicated uh, communicated nodes? Uh, and uh, topics like uh, data for, uh, for sure. So let's come to our next question. And uh, Daniele, we need to uh, uh, keep in mind that the uh, webinar should be uh, ended in about five minutes. Uh, okay. But we have still a couple of questions to answer. Uh, let's try to, to answer a couple of them and the rest uh, uh, by, by email. Uh, there's one from Mr. Ansari. Uh, how would we approach the problem of communication using 6150 outside the substation? You mentioned that the XMPP protocol is under development, but for now, sh uh, should we just use the gateway firewall using a protocol converter to convert data, for example, from uh, 6870504? What would be the best approach here? Uh, yes, uh, let's say um, it is uh, actually um, Possible to use uh, uh, 6150 outside of the substation uh, if you have a full control over uh, uh, the network infrastructure. So, for example, if you have uh, the possibility of, uh, which typically is the case uh, in, uh, in automation, let's say, uh, if you have the possibility of configuring the firewalls freely and so on, uh, <clears throat> you can actually use 6150 outside of the substation. Of course, uh, the, the thing you, which we, you have to take into account is to use proper cyber security measures, but that's uh, uh, applicable to all protocols, of course. Um, and uh, uh, otherwise, uh, for uh, uh, smart grid uh, scenarios, uh, I think that you will have to use a VPN until the, the, uh, the XMPP mapping uh, will be available. Okay, uh, again, a question from Mr. Franzel. Uh, 6150 requests uh, MMS over T T TP KT over secure IP tunnels. Uh, there should be not a, uh, be a problem. Is this uh, correct? Uh, not sure I've understood. The, uh, the, the question is uh, 6150 requests MMS over T TP KT uh, over secure IP tunnels. Uh, is there any problem that can be expected, or is this straightforward? Um, I uh, I don't uh, know exactly this technology, but it sounds like uh, a kind of uh, IP check uh, technology or uh, uh, so a kind of VPN technology, if I got it uh, right. Um, so I think this kind of solution is quite. Uh, 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 quite uh, good for securing uh, MMS uh, uh, communication, or it is applicable for sure. Uh, the idea is that with the, the uh, XMPP mapping, you will have a more uh, uh, direct way of uh, uh, of using a 6150 over internet. So there's an, another question from Mr. Alonso, uh, in the architecture between research centers uh, for 6150, the device connected to the real-time tool was the 6150 server and not the client. Why is this the case? Um, I will quickly go to the, to the picture. Uh, one, more, one moment, I need to give you back to presenter rights. Uh, OK, 
okay? Uh, so the question was uh, why uh, in this picture you see uh, the server here, right? Uh, um, uh, can you can you hear me? Uh, yeah, the, the question was uh, um, device connected to the real time tool was the six one eight fifty server. Ah, okay. And not the client. Why? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, the principle is that um, uh, the. Uh, the remote communication between uh, the different facilities is implemented by <coughs> the, the real-time repository. So uh, in, uh, at this level, you have remote communication between facilities, uh, while the 61850 communication client from server is uh, uh, always uh, uh, at this level uh, local to one single research infrastructure. Um, so at uh, Research Infrastructure 2 here, you, you have both the server and uh, the client. Of course, this server uh, shows uh, the, the measurements and the controls of the remote uh, infrastructure, but the server is local uh, to uh, Research Infrastructure 2. Okay, then let's uh, try to answer two additional questions before we uh, finalize uh, the webinar. There are still some others. We try to answer them by, by mail. Um, the next question is from Mr. Ansari. Uh, from a user point of view, do we need to configure the SCD files or will these be configured by the manufacturer uh, or some databases? Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, let's say that uh, in the engineering uh, process, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, the um, uh, each uh, manuf equipment, uh, equipment manufacturer will provide standardized file, which are the ICD uh, uh, described here. So you will uh, uh, get a standardized description for each device by uh, each uh, vendor. And then one last question uh, what, uh, from Mr. Resch. What are the typical data exchange via SCADA over the SIM interface? Uh, okay. Uh, the, Let's see, the, the SIM SCADA interface by itself uh, just uh, transfer uh, measurements and controls, so it's a very uh, direct interface uh, to the SCADA. Uh, the, uh, the main point is uh, what kind of uh, higher level uh, SIM services uh, you use. And uh, in, uh, in Airgrade, for example, I have shown the idea to use uh, um, a state estimator function like a demonstration of this kind of uh, SIM interface. Um, <clears throat> which uh, will take uh, SIM representation with uh, real-time measurements, read, uh, read from uh, uh, the SIM scale, and uh, will perform, uh, uh, let's say, a distributed uh, state estimation. This is an idea. Uh, of course, in principle, any SIM conformant uh, system, like, for example, the one I've shown in the general picture, can be applied to this architecture. Uh, Okay, Daniele, uh, thank you for answering the questions. So uh, the time is now over for the webinar. There's still some uh, additional questions uh, which we have uh, reported. Uh, uh, I think we can we can um, uh, get in contact with you by mails by, by mail answering uh, those questions. Sorry for that uh, that we have not much more time, but uh, the webinar was scheduled for 90 minutes, and I think we pretty much kept uh, this uh, time schedule. Uh, first of all, I want uh, to thank you very much, um, Daniele, uh, for your presentation and very interesting insights in the 650 and SIM standardization, and also what we are how we are using uh, those standards, especially for Connect, uh, for connecting different uh, uh, laboratories in the Horizon 2020 Eurigrid project. Uh, and as I said, if you're interested in uh, our activities, please have a look at our website also. Uh, we provide the information right after uh, the webinar together with the uh, recordings and uh, the presentation. And also, if you are if you have uh, some uh, interesting smart grid activities and you need a uh, laboratory infrastructure, please feel free to look at our website. Um, descriptions of all the available laboratories are available. And please uh, feel free to submit uh, project, uh, project proposals. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, in case they are uh, positively evaluated here, highly welcome to visit our laboratories and perform your experiments in our labs. Uh, I want to thank all of you also for your interest uh, in uh, our webinar, in our project, in our activities, and uh, hope to see you uh, somewhere else. I think we are planning some additional uh, um, webinars out of the project uh, and also of uh, some of the IEEE um, working groups, uh, uh, technical committees, which I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, so uh, uh, please feel free to uh, join us uh, at another event. Uh, Many thanks and I uh, wish you a nice uh, um, afternoon and a nice weekend. Thank you for joining and goodbye. Thank you. Thanks to everybody. Bye.